Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to Local Marketing Institute Q&A Live. We are joined again today with our special guest host, Colin Nielsen. And Greg is off in a, at a trade show, actually, right now. I believe he's at, uh, was it Brighton SEO or something like that? I don't know. He's across the pond. Brighton, Brighton SEO. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so... As usual, if you need to contact Colin, you can reach him at Colin Nielsen. He's with Sterling Sky on Twitter, uh, Colin Nielsen. You can reach me, Ben Fisher. I'm at The Social Dude with Steady Demand. And as per usual, if you have not already done this, please join the Local Marketing Institute Connect on Facebook. I think we're up to like 14,000 members. We need to update this screen. And um, yeah. So please join us there. We share news, have good conversations, do troubleshooting, all sorts of stuff. And then finally, please definitely guess if you like to have this on the go, feel free to grab it from your local uh, good podcast at place. And with that, I'm going to stop. And we are just going to get rocking and rolling. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty amazing, Ben. It was so, so that screenshot there was about 13,000 members ago. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> that's, that's some impressive growth, man. Good stuff. Good it rest. is. It is. You know, and, and I mean, I can't take any credit for it. You know, I mean, Eric Sheinfeld, it was all him. He grew this puppy from the ground up, you know, and uh, I, we just acquired it. <laughs> <It's all. laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's been a really, it's been a, a really nice ride and working with Eric has been great. And uh, just working, you know, just helping out the community. I mean, that's kind of, that's what we do, right? Really, at the end of the day. And so, speaking of, we're going to get into our updates here really quick. And then we will get started in on our session. And happy Friday, everybody. All right. So, um, just going to go over some kind of little news tidbits about Google Business Profile. And the, the first one is we're going to talk about um, a news article that Google recently released here. And I'm going to give you the search engine roundtable article where they're basically stating that AI can now go ahead and update your Google business profile, specifically things for like hours. And uh, what I find uh, probably the most interesting about it is the fact that it's using data points from similar businesses in the area. So let's say you have a floor, you're a florist and your hours are actually 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But you have not updated your hours or you just don't have hours in your Google business profile. Well, Google's gonna look at other florists in the same area, see what their hours are, maybe join that data up with something from a local guide or a suggested edit. And then based on whatever the AI figures out, it'll go ahead and update those hours for you. Um, it's interesting. I, I think like anything with AI, it's probably prone to a lot of error, but uh, what's your take on that, Colin? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's interesting. I know the duplex stuff has been happening for some time now. Um, and, and those calls are spooky. Uh, in the sense that it seems like a real individual calling you to confirm information, but it's not. It's it's uh, it's, it's artificial intelligence. Um, the one that's really interesting. I'm just looking at the article now. Uh, the fact that stuff can be updated based off popular times mm. using real user location data for your business. So I assume. So is that the idea there that if if you're saying you're open from eight till four, but there's never anything happening according to popular times at eight o'clock, Google could potentially shift that based on the fact that there's no activity happening with the business at that time? It's quite possible. And you think about it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense, right? Because if you've got people showing up to that business at 8 a.m. and it's picking up your phone, then it's pretty, it's a pretty, it's not a stretch to basically say that, okay, well, this business probably opens up at eight. You mm -hmm. know, there's probably some factors in there that don't make sense. Like, well, the owner uh, coming in, but if it's doing popular times, it's based on a lot of people. So, but what happens if you have a, you know, a low traffic company, right? Yeah. 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 The hours one is an interesting one because when you like, because we know that from Google's perspective, the worst thing, that could happen as far as Google's concerned is to have somebody use Google maps 
find a business, show up at the business and the business is not there or it's closed. Right. So it's just interesting how they're deciding that they're going to use this combination of, of AI, but also maybe trust the business owner, maybe not to, to kind of fill that in. Uh, so yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely interesting. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. And I have to agree that uh, <laughs> duplex is kind of weird. <laughs> have you used it yet? I've used it to book in a, a uh, restaurant. I haven't personally used it. I've just heard recordings of of other people using it, and it's always amusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I it's cool. What, it's I very cool. What it sounds like, but yeah, it's kind of neat. They've been they've been working on that for a long time. Um, let's see. Okay, so the next piece we have is about local service ads. And this is a really quick one. This is where local service ads has added some more new categories. But the kind of categories that they've added are really intriguing. Um, beauty school, driving instructor, funeral home, question mark. House cleaning services makes sense. Massage school, question mark. Massage <laughs> school. And uh, <clears throat> the one that excites me probably the most, veterinarian. Hmm. That's cool. That's um, that, that's very interesting because it's it's a big departure from what they currently have as far as the list goes. So, and I think that, that this update here shows that they're going to be doubling down a little bit more, maybe on on local service ads and expanding those categories. And uh, who knows? Maybe eventually, like we've been asking Google for a long time, maybe they'll give this capability to marketing companies <laughs> one day. I don't know. What are your thoughts, man? Um, yeah, I, I, I caught this. I don't know if you caught it originally the same way. I've got a tracker set up that just pings me whenever certain help center articles get updated. Um, so I saw that one come in. Uh, do you know if this was, this is in the US specifically, right? These new categories? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I know here in Canada, even um, like we're still waiting for, LSAs to roll out to uh, realtors, for oh, example. Wow. Really? Yeah. Which uh, like some of the real estate uh, agencies that we work with, it's a, it's a very common question. Like when is this coming to Canada? So there, there's quite the discrepancy between U S and Canadian uh, categories right now. All right. Oh, sorry about that, Trisha. Thank you. Let me go ahead and get that link for you really quick. There we go. And the list. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever dealt with a, a real estate and local service ads. It's very interesting. Let's just put it that way. They get a lot of house rentals. So you, you get to dispute a lot of stuff. Um, okay, cool. This one's for you, bud. Um, talk, uh, talk to us a little bit about the help center, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as far as Google business profile support goes, there are uh, a couple options to contact support that have been missing for a couple of years that are now back. Um, so if you go through the, uh, the flow of, of trying to contact support, you may find yourself with uh, the option to use chat support again. Uh, and I believe call support is mm -hmm. back as well. So, so two options that uh, I haven't used them since they came back, but historically uh, I can remember uh, chat in particular was extremely uh, useful and beneficial. And just uh, the idea that if you're trying to work through some issue with your Google business profile and you can be in real time, copy and pasting links or CID numbers or whatever you need to try and solve the problem and have it solved by the time you're, done that interaction, uh, I, I think is one of the best things ever. Um, have you used it, Ben, since oh, yeah. it's been back? Since oh, it's yeah. come back, though? Yeah. Yeah, I used it actually the day it came back. <laughs> um, what I think is awesome is, is, okay, so for a little bit of history is that when the pandemic hit two years ago, then basically they shut this, this all got shut down. There was no more chat. There was no more callbacks. And so, but now, yeah, you're going to get it. The other cool thing about it is, for the U.S. only, it's 24 hours. 
So you don't have to wait. You don't, it's not going to be over at 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, I find that the operators are actually very helpful, more so than they were before. And uh, yeah, I've solved some cases, literally, uh, same call, basically. And, you know, like I had to do a, oh gosh, what was it? It was a uh, merger, actually, merger and remove. And I got it done literally within 10 minutes, if that, nice. something yeah. like that. So it was really, really handy. Cool. Okay. So and do you know, Ben, so it's 24 hours US mm -hmm. only. I assume there's specific hours if you're outside of US. Do you know, yes. or, or based on your experience so far, um, the support people you've been interacting with, are, have they been in the US no. or not necessarily? No. Okay. no, unfortunately, it's kind of like it was before. They're all based out of India, it seems. Okay. But the command on the English typing language is pretty good, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if, if you get a resolution to your problem, that's, that's yep. all that matters. Exactly. And just a quick pro tip for you. If you are going through this, they're always going to ask you for the email address associated with the listing. So if you kind of kind of skip that minute, because it takes them like a minute to, uh, to ask you the question and then respond with a thank you, um, you can just say, basically, when they say, hi, whatever your name, hi, Colin, how you doing? How can I help you? You just say, just so you know, my listing is in Colin at Sterling Sky, you know, something like that. And it'll just very, very move you through it a lot quicker. Um, all right, cool. Next up, I want to congratulate my buddy here, Colin. Colin has been upskilled to a platinum Google business profile product expert. Thanks, so, man. Congrats, dude. Very well deserved, my friend. Um, we also had uh, Crystal Tang, Stefan Sombark, Tom Waddington, yep. Sherry Benelli, all got upskilled basically uh, into platinum status. And Amy Toman has joined the, the crew as a gold product expert. So that's awesome. Amy's awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> she totally is. Totally is. I mean, I, I, everybody on this list more than well deserved, more than well deserved. So, um, so yeah, so cool. All right. With that being said, so um, local you has been going on for many years now and has now been virtual, what, three, two times or three times? At least three. I think it's three. This okay. was, uh, this was possibly the fourth. Is it? Because it's yeah, been since yeah. the beginning of the pandemic. That might've been the fourth one that we just yeah. had. Yeah. Might've been, might've been. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn this over to you, bro. How was local you, what were the highlights for you and, um, and cap that off with, uh, some really good details on the vicinity rollback. Yeah. Um, so first of all, actually, I was going to maybe share this in the chat for everybody, uh, everyone. So all of the, uh, the videos, videos on demands are available now, um, uh, props to Richard. Uh, he's our video guy. Got that turned around very quickly. Um, so those are all available for purchase now. Um, it was it was a really amazing local U. Um, like they're all oh he's really good, but this one just felt special for some reason. Um, every session was wonderful. The two that I, I really enjoyed um, probably more so than any others. Uh, they were both related to spam. Um, so uh, Curtis Boyd who we talked a little bit about in his company, the transparency company, a couple uh, of these calls ago, uh, did a session on reviews, which was really neat. And it was just sort of his learnings from like reporting on those tens of thousands or some reviews and sort of just classifying them based on the type of negative review and, and the success rates that they've experienced in terms of reporting it to Google. So for instance, like, the one category of review that basically they never are able to get removed or it's super low is uh, when the business just says that like the person's lying or like it's not true what they're saying in the review, right? With, obviously, that's a really tough one to get rid of because Google is just like, well, like I'm not getting in between a he said, she said thing to get rid of a review. Um, but then he classified, you know, if, if uh, em employees are, are reviewing their ex-employer 
or lawyers are reviewing each other, like all those are super high uh, success rate type things. Um, so, so that was a really wonderful presentation. Um, what Joy did, he, did. What did he say about uh, no star? No, I mean, star, no content. I don't recall actually. Okay. No, yeah. I don't recall if, if, if you got into that or if I just forgot about what he said about that. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm going to say that if it's part of a, a pattern, he probably had a high success rate. Mm. Yeah, but he I definitely, definitely talked about networks. <laughs> I did not. I was on bad. I didn't get to see it. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go buy the back. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of on demand. <laughs> but cool. Right uh, yeah, Joy did one on uh, uh, sp- like uh, not reviews, but spam, like location spam uh, key- or keyword stuffing spam. And just want to. It was a really interesting title to her session. It was uh, the state of spam fighting. What we learned from analyzing 5,306 listings in 16 industries. Um, and she's actually publishing uh, that presentation, I think on Monday. Awesome. Um, so the, on the Sterling Sky blog, there'll be an entire summary of which industries we find are the most spammy and which ones are like the highest success rate in terms of reporting them, et cetera. So that was pretty cool. Um, the other session I, I really loved because it was... Uh, not a topic that I don't think has ever come up at local U Hmm. and it was presented by a person who I admire very much uh, for anyone who knows Matthew Hunt, Um, a real, like real old school local SEO OG, like going back to like 2008 era. Uh, He did a a LinkedIn presentation um, Hmm. related to local and it was all about how to create like an avalanche of sales through LinkedIn. Uh, So that was really cool. Uh, so those are my favorite sessions. And then we talked a lot about the vicinity updates, uh, our findings there, as well as the correction uh, that happened recently, which, which we can definitely talk a little bit more about. Um, and, yeah. and, and one last thing, we, we also announced that uh, we'll be back having our very first in-person Local U event uh, officially announced for July 28th, yes. 2022. And it's going to be in Denver, uh, tickets and venue and hotel and all that stuff to be determined coming soon, but it's July 28th. I'm super jazzed about that. Me too. I really, really am. I know Joy's been on the fence about that for, for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, yeah. which of course, right. <laughs> but yeah, no, going to, going back to a local U event. Oh yeah. So much. I'm so looking forward to it, especially in Denver. <laughs> Denver's always fun. It is. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, yeah, actually, I think you and I met each other for the first time. I think it was in Denver, but it was at the PE Summit, right? Oh, was God. It? Was, was it? it? I, I, I feel like maybe it was California the, the first time, but. Might have been California. Yeah, that's it, true. Could be that's wrong. True. That's true. I think, cool. I think it was. So talk to us a little bit about the vicinity rollback, man. Uh, you did a session on this, right? Yeah. Uh, Yan uh, Gilbert. Uh, on our team here at Sterling Sky, we uh, we both talked about the vicinity updates. And I mean, I, th- I think everybody who's, who's probably listening today is familiar with what it is and you know, big local update that happened around November 21st of 2021. And it rolled out to about December 8th. And it was easily the biggest local algo specific update in about five years. Um, so... What's interesting is that this update happened in that short period. So November 21st, December 8th, it was done. Google even officially announced that it was done on December 8th. We're done with this update. But then fast forward to about March. This is approximate. So this is just based on our our observations. Approximately March 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So just a couple of weeks ago, there was some kind of very noticeable uh, correction that happened with this update. And, and, and basically what that means is, so there was all these businesses who, before the vicinity update, if you look at their GeoGrid ranking report, it was all greens across their entire market. And then it shrunk down to about half. Um, but then when this correction happened, it, it grew either back to what it was, um, or at least regained about half of what they lost. Uh, but what was really interesting with this uh, correction is it only seemed to have uh, like a noticeable noticeable impact on geo modified searches. 
Okay. Um, so we were looking at a lawyer, for instance, and they got hammered uh, and lost like all the rankings for, say, car accident lawyer. Um, and then after this correction, they didn't really regain anything back for car accident lawyer, but for car accident lawyer Dallas, right, or whatever the city is, mm-hmm. it, it, it basically went back to exactly how it was before. So that's another really interesting okay. thing that came out of this update is there's a major difference. And and when you're tracking rankings between the implicit version of a keyword without the city and the explicit version with the city. Uh, so, so you definitely want to be tracking both of those at all times and definitely using GeoGrid ranking reports, or you wouldn't have even noticed that the vicinity update happened, you know? Interesting. Interesting. So are you now adding geo modifiers to all of your ranking reports? We had before. Uh, so, so like our, our standard setup with any report is uh, non-geo, geo, uh, and typically we'll even do like the near me modifier in, in our ranking reports. Okay, right on. Very cool. So there you have it. If you are an agency or if you're doing any kind of reporting, now you know you can find out a little bit more to see if you've gotten your rankings back, basically. Um, we haven't really noticed a, that much of a difference with our client base. Um, our clients didn't get really hit that hard during the vicinity update. I think we only had maybe a couple, like a handful that got hit hard. And they were mainly yep. lawyers. They were like in LA, you know, more than anything else. Um, some in Florida. And they were definitely keyword stuffing. Absolutely. You know, but, you know, the, and they, they complained, of course, after the eighth. But, um, but yeah, no, we haven't seen too much. So, I mean, this is, this is good. I think it's good news. Um, it kind of makes more, a little bit of sense too, actually. Yeah. And sp- speaking of keyword stuffing, Ben, um, another thing. So in, in the video, so during that session at Local U, one of the things that Yan showed, and he's been doing some research on this, is, you know how it, it sort of seemed that everyone just sort of assumed that what happened with this update was th- they turned the dial down on, mm-hmm. on the ranking impact of the keywords in the name. But it definitely seems to be a little bit more complex than that. And what he is hypothesizing, and, and he's not totally finished uh, the testing he's doing on this, that it's not that Google just turned down the, the, the weights, but they, it almost seems like they've applied some sort of a filter that's related to the name. So that if there's, say, 10 people in a market, and they all have very similar sort of keywords added to their name, mm-hmm. instead of them all performing extremely well, Google's going... I'm going to pick these two or these three continue showing them because they have these other things going for them. And these guys aren't going to show up as well. That's kind of like in the Hawk update, right? Very, I, very similar. Yes. To, yeah. to the, the possum update, which was the, yeah. the, the pr- precursor to the Hawk update. Yes, yeah. exactly. So like, you know, when you had similar categories, right. It's like one would win. Yes. And so yep. It sounds like they've applied, maybe applied that same type of logic. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. And that, that makes total sense. <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, Yan uh, explains it very eloquently and he's sort of the one who's been, um, he's been using his local Falcon tool to kind of uh, flush this stuff out, which is pretty neat. Right on. Rocking, man. All right, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that video too. Uh, the next thing we have, this is, all right, this is, this is really, really, really I, I think it's extremely interesting. And let me just go ahead and put this in our chat. All right. We're just doing all sorts of stuff with this year round table today. So uh, I don't know about you, Colin, but in the local ranking factors study that we do every single year, right, with Darren, and it used to be Moz, I always, I think with the last two years, I've been saying that Google is going to bring more transactional value to, to the Google business profile. And last, the last time we did this survey, I was like, they are absolutely going to be doing this shit this year. It's going to happen. has to happen. And I know we rail on this all the time, right? So Google's gone ahead and now actually publicly stated that a couple different things here over the past couple months. Number one, you've got the WooCommerce plugin, right? Which allows you to bring in uh, whatever you have in store as a product into your Google business profile. We of course have Pointy, and then you have Google Merchant Center. But the cool thing about this piece of news is that 
they are explicitly stating in their help doc that by adding product to your Google business profile, it will increase your visibility and your ranking. That's kind of seismic. When Google mentions ranking, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a rare thing. Yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? What do you, why do you think they are, are going to give businesses a leg up just because they have product? Well, I get the visibility thing. So like, I almost wonder if whoever wrote that is, is like, you know, by the end of today is going to take out the word ranking or like, you know, <laughs> right. Um, right. Well, I, I mean, at the end of the day, um, uh, Google wants the user to have the best experience possible with Google's products. Um, so if they're integrating these features and they're vetted and they're, they're Google's confidence that users interacting with them are going to have a wonderful experience, it would make sense that yeah. they would want to promote some of this stuff. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, I mean, I, I personally, I can't tell you how many times it's like I've gone and looked at a store and been like, man, do they have this in stock? Like, you know, I really don't want to go there <laughs> if I don't have to. <laughs> so, so um, I think it's great. And I think it's great for, for merchants, um, you know, and I think it's also re it's really great for agencies because um, now we as an agency, we can solve this problem for our customers. And we can also get a ranking boost at the same time. I mean, why not? Right. Um, and for consumers, it's really handy because, you know, it's just another way to buy a product like you were just saying. I mean, I completely agree. Um, Steven's asking, do you know if other shop plugins are coming like BigCommerce? We don't know, Steven. Uh, we only know what's been announced so far. And they haven't said anything uh, else about anything else coming down the pipe. And uh, Eric's like, because they're spending money. <laughs> I, I I agree with that. It'd be interesting to see if Google actually takes a cut. I don't think they would though. Um, yeah, cool. All right. And then, all right. So this one's for you. This is a question for you, Colin. What happened to my customer's Google review? Uh, good afternoon. This is being asked by Nathan at Construction by Design Pro. My customer recently submitted a review. I received an alert email and I could even see some of what she wrote. When I click the link, there's no review. When I go to my business page and look for her review, it's not there. Just an error within Google. Did she delete it? I have no reason to suspect she did, but before I call her, I thought I'd ask for help. Yeah, that's something you can go to the, uh, the product, the Google My Business product forum, get some help on. Um, there's actually an interesting article Joy uh, Hawkins published at the Sterling Sky blog in December. Uh, it's called Why Are My Google Reviews Not Publishing? Mm -hmm. uh, and she kind of goes through, A, what, what are some possible reasons why the review is not showing up in the first place? Um, so just to give you an example, she talks about like, if your business offers free Wi-Fi and they're leaving the review while they're connected to your Wi-Fi, that can cause you know, filter mm -hmm. issues. A um, few other reasons listed there, but then she kind of gets into what to do about it. And uh, in these types of cases, you can actually go to the forum. And as long as you have, like you said, you got that notification um, that you clicked on. And then when you got there, Nathan, the, the review was gone. But as long as you have that notification, you can take a screenshot of that, go to the forum. Um, and then one of the product experts can escalate it. And in my experience lately, I think I've escalated maybe six or seven of these exact things over the last couple of weeks. And I think every single one of them, Google was able to uh, have the review like reinstated. Yeah. Thanks, Trisha. Sharing that there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I cover, I've covered this actually twice in my search engine land article that's uh, talking about different bugs that are happening with Google business profiles. And um, one of the things I really encourage everybody to do is, is get into a habit into a habit of taking screenshots of every review email you've got coming through. Um, because I think it was what, gosh, I think it was like three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, Colin, where uh, there was a massive glitch. Yeah. And we were talking tens, 20, 30 reviews go missing a day for most, for a lot of people. Now Google rolled that back <clears throat> and restored all those reviews. 
But in that kind of a situation, if it's not like a, a problem and it's just a filtering issue, mm. then you have no choice. You have to go to the support community and have a product expert escalate it for you. And you have, you have to have those screenshots. If you don't, you're not, we can't find them basically is what it comes down to. So yep. yeah, get into the habit. All right. So I thought we had enough questions here today. <laughs> the last one. Yeah, that's the last one. All right. So we're going to go into some regular live questions. By the way, everybody, um, we're actually at a halfway point today and we can use more questions. So if any of you have more questions, feel free, throw them into the Q&A and we will get to them. Uh, Stephen asks, <laughs> does geotagging help? All right. I don't know if you're joking or not, Stephen, but I'll answer your question. No, of course not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're joking. Okay. Capital um, LOL. Yep. And uh, and please do put the questions into the Q&A section because we can keep track of them there so much easier. Um, but I'll just answer the couple that just came through chat. Oh, wait. Kathleen, you asked that in the Q&A already. I will be getting to you in a second. Uh, Paul, I actually have an article that I'm going to be writing for Local U here very shortly uh, that's going to cover WooCommerce or the Woo plugin, I should say. It's, it's a Woo WordPress plugin, by the way, uh, not WooCommerce. So, um, but I'll be covering what that is and how it actually works. <clears throat> okay. So just into our line of questions. All right. Ruben Pope is asking, uh, we have really inconsistent results with GLSA. Is there anything we can do with GBP other than accurate info, updated photos, or anything like that? Ruben, that's kind of two questions um, because your GLSA is not impacted by your Google business profile except for the reviews that flow in. So well, I'm going to take GBP out of the equation here and just address GLSA. Um, it's kind of like Google Business Profiles in a way, in the aspect, uh, in the, the sense that do all the things, I guess you could say, right? And that is, is yes, update your photos, get reviews, do things like that. Update your hours, your services, you know, everything that you can in GLSA. Um, they do help in one way or another. I guess is the answer. Same thing goes for Google business profiles, right? Updating everything in your Google business profile when you can is a good idea. Um, any insights there, Colin? Uh, the, only, the only thing that jumps out to me that I've seen the people on our team that, that do all of our, our sort of LSA work for clients is that they've had a lot of success this year disputing leads, which mm -hmm. means that you're, you're returning, uh, in some cases, thousands of dollars back to the business. Um, so that's not, and I think Ben, I think that does actually have an impact in the long run over, over quality and, and all those types of things, like the, the more data that you're feeding back into it. Uh, but I mean, even if that's not the case, if you can save a business a few thousand bucks over the course yeah. of a few months, because you're proactively disputing leads, that seems to be something that, uh, business owners get very uh, excited about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, we look at this uh, SEO from day one, right, has always been about trying to prove your value to the customer at the end of the day. And I mean, I know, I know Sterling Sky does this and we do it at State of Demand. We always try to prove as much value as possible, right? I mean, you guys have a the, what, the little nifty ROI calculator that you guys do, right? Yeah, and yeah, for our reporting. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I completely agree. If you can dispute, you know, even a couple hundred dollars worth of leads, right. Um, like in the service industry, you know, but, or like you said, a couple thousand dollars, absolutely. You know, your client's going to be super duper happy <laughs> at the end of the day. They're going to be like, okay, you just paid for yourself. Thank you. Yeah. So, yep. Completely agree. Um, Let's see, we'll go to another chat question from Eric. Uh, I'm not going to try your last name, Eric. So, um, oh, wow, I will for the fun of it. Lesperance, how's that? Um, any updates to business messages, chat? Seems like a feature users are getting familiar with and using more. What about, yeah, actually, that's a good question for you, bud. What do you think? 
well, I mean, there's always stuff happening like in the pipeline um, with this feature that you know Google is is working on. Uh, I get mixed up with some of the things that that are currently under NDA with the product experts program. I know there's a few things related to to that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I have any specific updates related to the chat feature. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's any updates per se, but I mean, I would just say from a general standpoint that certain industries perform extremely well with business hmm. messaging chat. Um, also, your quote requests come into business messages as well, not chat. Good point. Yep. Um, yeah, there is some things under NDA that we can't discuss. That's true. But, you know, for the most part, I look at the chat feature to be a conversion tool, right? There's not going to be any ranking benefit from it. Of course, it'll get turned off if you don't respond in 24 hours. But at the end of the day is if your customer is getting those chats, they're going to have an extremely high chance of converting right there, especially with a mm. quote. So, yep. you know, going back, you know, we, we keep on talking today about, you know, conversions, conversions, and, you know, more interactions. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, would, I would be using it. I turn it on for all of our clients. So if they don't use it, oh, well, <laughs> can't do anything about it. You brought up a good point there, Ben, about the conversion thing. So the response time is actually really important. And one time, so I saw something one time that, that really drove this home. So I used the chat feature, sorry, I used the quote request, which is connected to, to the chat feature. The minute I submitted the quote, it then showed me three other businesses, oh, yeah. uh, right? Like trying to prompt you to go like, oh, here's three other options. Do you want to get quotes from them as well? And listed um, underneath each one was their average response time. Really? Yeah. So, so if Google is going to surface that information in relationship to competitors, you absolutely want to make sure that you're yeah. like, responding as, as, as quick, like forget 24 hours, that's Google's standard. But like, you know, if the two guys are responding within typically responds in five minutes and yours is typically responds in three hours, I could definitely see that being impactful. Yeah, and Paul Lamplin is actually chiming in here that he uses the chat feature quite a bit for his retail customers. People are asking if things are in stock. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's very important to respond quickly. I agree. You know, it's kind of interesting that you just, I was just thinking about this as you're talking about that, Colin, um, how Google actually will display a pretty decent amount of information now on top of a competitor's Google business profile. Mm. You know, I think now we have... Q&A, we have posts, and now these, leads. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? <laughs> you mean like above their knowledge panel? Yeah, or on mobile specifically. So like posts that you have, if you do a search for a business and say they're a personal injury lawyer, right? Then you might see posts from related companies above mm. their profile. Um, Q and a that's in testing right now, Yeah, but that's showing up and, uh, and well, now what you were just talking about with quotes and I, I didn't realize that quotes were, were time uh, was yeah. up either. So that's freaking awesome. <laughs> and Andy, Andy shared, Andy shared something. Was it last week or the week before it was somewhere, uh, where it was a screenshot of just like really visible competitors, like a scrolly uh, hmm. highly visual list of competitors right above uh, the knowledge panel. And if you're looking at a mobile device, they're, they're pretty much more visible oh, than yeah. the individual business itself. Um, so just, yeah. Andy, he gets all the good stuff over there. <laughs> he gets to see a able, lot of stuff. I was able to have. replicate that one. And it, oh, it you was, were? It, it, was, it was, yeah, it, it was very, very beneficial. If you were one of those businesses that were showing up above the actual business profile. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting uh, that they're taking that tact, but I mean, it makes using the features so much more important for your for customers, basically, and for yourself. You know, if you have a chance to be you know, over top of your competitors and get that first visibility, phew, fantastic. 
Um, all right, Scott. Scott, you are asking. Uh, you're brand new here. Welcome. So, uh, has anyone ever set up a local business directory to get links from other local businesses? Or would that be considered spam? Uh, you want to set up a page promoting other local businesses that we recommend and get a link in return. Oh, God, this is an old question. Um, go for it, Colin. Basically, set yeah, up I'm a link directory. Yeah, I think intent is 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 like ninety percent of what you would want to think about here. If it's a directory that's being set up for that purpose, there's, I mean, Google could probably figure that out, and it's probably going to cause more harm. But if it's if you're just talking about a like you want to build your own business directory that's going to provide some value and also will happen to have the value of of having some links go to the businesses that are included in that directory. I, mean, I think that's a different story. Yeah. Um, but if it's just like some swappy linky type thing, you're probably best not to go down that road. Yeah. I mean, let's just put it this way. I mean, you know, yeah, good idea, Scott. Um, but it's been around, that idea has been around since the early 2000s. And actually even before that, technically. And uh, while it works for companies like Best of the Web, for instance, um, and it actually stemmed from like the, well, anyway, it doesn't matter history wise, but, um, but basically Google, uh, is smart enough to detect patterns. So if you are linking out to a local baker and you are asking them for a link in return and they give you that link in return and, uh, oh, and don't apologize to uh, every question is, is a good question, by the way. Um, so, but basically Google can detect it. Now, is it going to hurt you in moderation? No. And will it get you links? Probably. But if you're getting those links, get them for traffic. Don't get them for ranking. Um, you know, use, get links that are going to be useful to people uh, that are visiting you, basically visiting your site. And so, you know, if like, your um, oh god, what's a great example? Like you know, a link to the local chamber of commerce or something like that. Um, you know, or other relational businesses in your area. And but I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest reaching back out to them and asking for a link because then you could end up getting reported um, very easily, and that could give you a good ding. So I'd be very careful with it. <clears throat> All right. Now let's get into the Q&A's. What have we got? Good, okay. All righty, so let's see. All right. And definitely, thanks for being here, Scott. Um, okay, Kathleen has a couple questions. So let's start there. So Kathleen, hi Kathleen, has a couple questions. Um, she has a question about a restaurant where Google keeps changing the dine-in to no dine-in which is hurting the business. What can I do to look, lock in the correct dine-in? You want to take it <laughs> or shall I? Uh, yeah, why, why don't you go back? I think you have a little bit more restaurant biz experience. All right, okay. So basically the first thing that you can do is, is make sure on your website that you do mention that dine-in is available. Uh, the dine-in, no dine-in, that came out here, you know, when COVID first struck and they really needed to convey this information. So that information is sourced from a couple different areas. Um, the first one is going to be probably your website, okay? Next one is going to be authoritative websites like Yelp, for instance, that might list your dine-in, no dine-in attribute. Uh, attribute. So make sure that, you know, all of your third-party citations, basically, if they do have that, are checked off properly. And um, the next thing is going to be is basically it's also done by suggested edits by users. So if they click on know this place, they're going to say things like no dine-in or dine-in. You can't control those, by the way. So, but what you can control at the end of the day is, is if it keeps on going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, is you can always come to the Google My Business community and ask for help, basically. Um, we will say though first, is that you should probably reach out to support first, get a case ID, hit them up on chat. 
uh, you know, or have them give you a call and ask them about this. And basically, if they come back and say it's fixed, but it's not actually fixed, then come to the community. Basically it. All right. Next, Kathleen has a secondary question. So, um, oh, okay. This is kind of a, it's, this is a good addition to what we talked about earlier, Colin. She has a client whose seven reviews that were left in the last three weeks to either disappear and never or never show up. Support says when they are gone, there's nothing that they can do to bring them back. The reviewers can see them. Is there anything that we can do about this? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty typical with, with regular support. Um, so again, you're going to want to go to the forum for something like that, but you have to have those, those things that are, you're going to have to have some sort of screenshot of the review. Hopefully you've got a notification uh, or whoever has notifications turned on for that biz got notification, uh, a, a link to the business or, or the dashboard uh, inside the dashboard. Without those things, uh, in my experience, Google, there's nothing they can really do. Yeah. And on top of that, um, sometimes support's wrong, you know? So, um, so yeah, definitely come to the community. However, if you get a negative response from an escalation of the community, you just have to live with it. So there are filters that are automated and manual um, that Google has in place for reviews. So if they detect any abuse, and abuse, I have to put that in air quotes, because abuse can be all sorts of different things that we can't get into. Um, but if there is detected abuse, then they're never going to, they just will not reinstate the review, basically. So be careful how you're getting, your customers are getting those reviews. Number one, definitely reach out to support. And then like Colin was saying, come to the community at last, your last ditch effort, basically. Yeah. All right. I hope that helped, Kathleen. Um, all right. We have a question from Michael Parker. I have a restoration client. Their Google business profile and all are fine. But as to the hours, we have hours, not 24 hours. There we have the hours in there, eight to five, not 24 hours, since I don't want to get suspended. I've heard this happens when you do 24 hours sometimes to some businesses. Actually, Michael, just so you know, 24 hours is the least likely offense when it comes to getting a suspension. Um, sometimes it will block a reinstatement. Sometimes. It's not all the time. Uh, there's other contributing factors that go into it. But um, so if you do truly answer, your customer does truly answer the phone 24 hours, like they have a call center, for instance, we see that garage door all the time and also in services, uh, which the restoration is, then uh, yeah, no, I, I would go ahead and change the hours to 24. Make sure you have all your documentation in a row, just in case you get suspended because editing hours can cause a suspension. Um, and there you go. You followed it up with question is, is they, they do offer 24 hour services uh, is there a way to add 24 hours? Yes, you can. Well, you don't want to do it as special hours. You would just make it 24 hours. Um, the other caveat here is this, and this is what I tell my clients when they want to do 24 hours, like lawyers, is I say, check your call tracking number stats. How many calls do you really get after 10 p.m.? For restoration, I'm going to probably bet not a lot. So is it worth it? Probably not. Um, so I would balance up those two, the, those things, basically. Do you answer the phone? And do you actually get calls? What you got on, you got anything on, on, on that, Colin? Yeah, nothing really to add other than, uh, like, especially for a service area business. 24 hours, like, like Google expects that most service area businesses operate 24 hours. If it's, especially if it's some sort of emergency, uh, if there's an emergency component to it or some sort of urgent service. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, yeah, I would go for it. But like Ben said, make sure your ducks are in a row um, if you do make changes, but that's not just for changing the hours. That goes for any changes you're going to make. Cool. Right on. All right, so let's see. We have a question from Al Anthony. Have you noticed that a 
ton of five-star Google review, i.e. enthusiastic specific information, like a bigger difference for business rankings rather than bland reviews. Notice Grammarly is able to decide the tone of writing. Yeah, so is Google. Um, so it's a, it's a good question. I mean, we know that the contents of a review is a, a, a conversion factor, of course, but we know that it can impact a, a, uh, a Google Business Profile's ranking to some extent. Um, I don't know. What do you think as far as tone, though, Colin? Well, um, if, if I can be a little promotional here. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Uh, so, so Joy is in the middle of, it's probably closer towards the end now of, of like a massive study about this specific thing. So it's really all around reviews and the impact of various things to do with them, whether it's with ranking or how high they show up um, in the actual feed or the snippets in the knowledge panel. And I believe that's going to be her big presentation at the July um, local U event. So um, I don't know how to answer that question right now. I think it's a really interesting question, but I think Joy's findings will probably address that. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, I don't know. When it comes to reviews, I say the more information, the better, right? You know, whether you have an exclamation point, you know, in there or not, I, I really don't know if that's going to cause a difference or not, but I haven't done a study on it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> go to local U. <laughs> I, I think definitely the answer. from, um, so, so John's comment there, like saying it definitely sees a lot of keywords within reviews come up with results, depending on the search query. That is a really good point. Um, so that's not necessarily speaking to like, enthusiastic words or, or stuff like that. But certainly if right. people are mentioning keywords, like a perfect example is if you search for a uh, best lawyer, best dermatologist near me, the review snippets that it shows um, are, are going to be ones that have best or top or, or leading and stuff like that. So, so like keyword rich reviews is definitely from a visibility perspective, important. Yep, I completely agree. And I just want to throw this out there <coughs> because we get the, we see this and get asked this quite often. Keywords and your tone in a review response are not mm. going to help you rank. <laughs> that is a complete myth. <laughs> they, they can certainly make you look like either a, a jerk business owner or a wonderful business owner. So it is important. It is. As a matter of fact, Andy uh, shared inside, inside of a Slack channel today, um, somebody who is basically stuffing the crud out of um, basically the labels field. Oh. Yeah. So, inside inside the dashboard. Yeah, inside the okay. dashboard. It's tangential. But, but yeah, inside the dashboard. That doesn't work either, by the way. Um, we have a blog post actually up on State Demand uh, where we, we go over the, the top myths basically around local SEO and sticking keywords and everything uh, <laughs> doesn't help at all. Um, okay. Uh, Eric Lesponce is asking, does the get quote button only show for contractors? What categories get the get quote button? Seems a little bit hit and miss. We don't see it all the time. I actually forget the answer on this one. <laughs> I think it's pretty much service-based gets to get a quote. But I've, def I've definitely seen it on, I'm just trying to see if it's showing right now. Uh, I've seen it on realtors before, mm. but what Google does is depending on the category, they'll change yep. the, uh, the copy on the button. So it might say get a quote, but if it's realtor, I think what last time it says book or book something. Yeah. Like a book now or something like book. that. Yeah. And, and uh, so, yeah, it, I think it's, it is category specific, but I think it, it does expand a little bit outside of service specific. Yeah. I mean. If I recall correctly, it is based on your primary, not your subcategory. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, fun keeping track of all these little bits and pieces of data. <laughs> and it's not super consistent either. I, I noticed for, yeah. for some businesses, depending on the browser you're on or the device you're on, sometimes that button will show up and sometimes it won't. Yep. 
And I would say if you if you do want to have it and you don't have it for some reason, and you're in like a, say a service category or you see a competitor that has it, check your dashboard first. Make sure that booking is not available or get a quote is, is not available and uh, reach out to support. It doesn't hurt. It takes a couple minutes. Just reach out to support and say, hey, how do I get this enabled? And, you know, best case scenario is they tell you what you need to do. Worst case scenario is they say, it's sorry, not available for your category. That's it. That's all you can do. Yeah. All right. Oh, gosh. Okay. So here's a GLSA question from an anonymous attendee. We get this every once in a while. All right. So GLSA business verification, customer reviews stuck pending. Interesting. It's been months. Submitted a ticket and attempted to call and contact. Okay. Is there a good resolution or answer why a GLSA or customer verification is okay? Stuck and pending. All right. This one I know. Um, they have active customers. Um, anonymous attendee, you might need to rephrase your question, actually. Because I can't tell if it's your profile, which is stuck, or if you're just the reviews are not coming through. So if you're still here and you're in chat, if you could explain that a little bit better, please. Um, okay, we'll move on to the next question. All right, so this is from Fern Kane. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> I was an established boutique advertising company, but I just I used just my personal name on LinkedIn, JMB, et cetera, to look for any good opportunities in marketing on LinkedIn. So I was not using LinkedIn to get new clients. My website would be for that. I wanted to be an individual, but now I have rebranded with a digital focus, new website, and new business name. What do I do now about my name? GMB says to use my business name followed by a hyphen, then my personal name. That's actually for a practitioner. That's a different story. You probably don't qualify as a practitioner. Uh, do I have to match that on all my social platforms? No. Is it mainly just LinkedIn? Yeah. Um, an individual or recruiter can find me if they have good marketing positions. On all the social media, I can use my new business name. Does LinkedIn have to match all the other platforms and GMB? If so, I guess I'll have to do that. It seems like what they're asking is, is basically, does LinkedIn have to match Google My Business? Are you getting anything else out of that, Colin? Yeah, well, I think your point about uh, the practitioner thing is really important here. Um, like if, 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 if it's an advertising company, there would not be practitioners. So the name should just be like the name on Google should just be the name of, of the advertising company. So it sounds like you rebranded. So whatever you rebranded to, that's, that's the name on Google, my business. I wouldn't put too much effort or worry or concern into how making sure that everything is consistent for Google. Uh, but for, from just like a branding perspective, if it makes sense to update LinkedIn, like just update it to whatever makes the most sense for you and your brand and your business. Don't worry so much uh, about Google, yeah. I would say. I, I completely agree. Um, and Google may source information from LinkedIn every once in a while, but it's going to be more about data quality than it is anything else. So I, 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 yeah, I would just stick with your business name. If you're looking to get recruited, yeah, just stick with your business name. <laughs> okay. Um, John uh, Panino, uh, Panino has a question. Happy Friday. Uh, had a bar client ask me if they could show that closing hours vary on the, asked me if they could show that closing hours vary on the listing. We added unspecified closing hours on the website just to show open until late. On the Google listing, I put open till 1 a.m. Would having unspecific hours on the website lead Google to show hours can vary on the listing? Um, I'm thinking special hours. Yeah, I can't remember what all the categories are within the, the more hours or, or special hours that, you, well, there's two options there, right? There, there's special hours. But there's also the more hours where you can actually select yeah. a label and add a different set of hours. Uh, 
So like there's, there's a few different options there. Would having the unspecific hours on the website lead Google to show hours can vary on the listing. I'm bringing well, it up really quickly here. Looking at the more hours. How the hours are displayed on the website can definitely have an impact of how your hours display on your Google listings. So that's definitely mm -hmm. something to keep in mind. It can easily cause them to auto change. Yeah, just so you know, they have access, breakfast, brunch, delivery, dinner, drive through happy hours, kitchen, lunch, online service hours, pickup, senior hours, and takeout. So John said uh, it's more that they can close early if it's slow. Not sure if they would uh, keep up with special hours. So, so this is okay. like a day by day, oh, we're closing early tonight because it's not busy. How do we reflect that? I think. Okay. Yeah, that's actually an easy answer. Um, John, and I would just use a Google, uh, Google post. That would probably be the easiest way for you to do it. If you're not going to, um, uh, Jenna, no, you can go on local marketing institute.com and there's a forum that you can fill out to actually ask questions. So, um, okay. So let's see. And speaking of that, yeah, we got a couple questions that we haven't gotten to. So, for everybody that has asked questions, um, Max, I see you have a question in there. Ruben, you have a question in there. And Stephen, you have a question. So for you all, we will answer those in two weeks. So um, yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Colin, thank you for coming in, my friend. I really appreciate it. And my pleasure. your thanks wealth of knowledge as usual, my friend. So, thank you. But everybody have a fantastic weekend and thanks for coming. And uh, we will be back in two weeks with Greg Gifford and I, and we will have a special guest with us to be announced. So, nice. All right. Thanks, all right. everybody. Have a good one. Bye, everybody. All right.